The developer took an entire week off their day job so that Everskies could publish a major update and announce its launch date. Registration is now open too after nearly a month of being down. Let's talk about the update, why registration and the form shut down, and some of the drama surrounding Everskies origin. Everskies launched a new homepage. There's a new section, a countdown to launch, a clothing section, and a friend activity section. This is a pretty nice standard homepage. I've been looking forward to this for a while. I remember a couple of months ago watching the discussion go on about what the homepage should look like. It looks great. I love it. Over the summer, I lurked on the Discord a little bit, so I have a funny story about the design of the homepage and how it got to where it is today. I had asked on the Discord, is this process collaborative? Are you taking feedback from the users? And there was a small group of users on the Discord who responded enthusiastically, yes, we have discussions, we are getting feedback from the user base while we design these pages. But there was one contrarian who said, that's not true, I wouldn't say it that way because my feedback hasn't been presented. And you guys aren't incorporating it. And this was, you know, not great news for the people who had initially responded to me because they wanted to make sure that everybody felt included. So they addressed the person and they said, how can we take your feedback into consideration? What's your feedback? We'd love to hear it. User experience design and layout is a skill and I don't want to make assumptions about this person, but it didn't sound like they had a visualization of what they would like to see or the language to describe it. And instead of providing examples of what they would like to see, they started saying, well, I don't want it to look like this. I don't want it to look like the virtual pop star page. I don't want it to look like movie star planet. It came across as though they were giving like an edict of like, I don't like that. But that's not how design conversations happen. You have to make arguments in favor of design elements and why things are more strategically placed or shaped in different ways. And this person didn't have the skill set to do that. But everybody in the group wanted to make this person feel like involved and as though they were collaborating but that kind of came across as overwhelming the person. So instead of coaxing out insights, the person felt attacked and it kind of devolves into like an hour long conversation. I got involved where we were trying to coax it out of the person. Like, what do you want it to look like in specific? And eventually the insight that this person gleaned was that they didn't want it to look like Virtual Pop Star. However, Virtual Pop Star's homepage was the best example of what they wanted it to look like. It's just kind of a funny example of how difficult it can be to appease everybody. Following that conversation, I've been really curious about what the homepage is gonna look like. So I was so excited when I saw it go live because I was like, is it gonna look like those other sites? Is it gonna be weird? And it looks totally normal. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just like something in my head. Like I think about that conversation sometimes. It's like so easy to overwhelm people and like clearly everybody in the conversation was really trying to integrate their feedback. When the forums and registration shut down, I started receiving a lot of questions asking why. There are a couple of parts to answer this question adequately, so buckle up. For those of you who are unfamiliar, there are two leads on Everskies. The lead developer, Parrot, and his girlfriend, Tut. Tut introduced Parrot to the genre of browser-based doll dress-up games. Reason 1. Viral popularity is unsustainable for a game of this production scale. Triple A games with thousands of users online at one time have teams with dozens of staff on them and enough capital to supply as much server space as necessary to keep the game online. Everskies went from not existing to driving more search interest than Neopets.com in less than six months. This is Google Trends and it ranks search interest by topic. The top most search generating term on the chart will get a 100 on its peak date. All others will be shown in relevance to that 100 point. As we can see, Everskies hit 100 over both Neopets and Virtual Popstar in the end of November. No one could have anticipated this sudden virality, especially the sole developer. It was too big to moderate and the influx of users was too demanding for the servers. This is partially why Flight Rising gradually opened the site for registration for two-day windows over the span of years. Not only were the developers able to plan out how much server space and attention they'd need to spend when, it also kept the interest alive for users who were eager to get in but for some reason or another missed a registration window. Reason number two. The moderation team was ill-equipped for the scale of the usership. The volunteer mods didn't have the tools to moderate as well as they needed, and there were more users per mod than sustainable. Trolls went rampant. 
In the words of one of the owners during the announcement that both the forums and the Discord would be disabled, this is not a healthy environment and this is definitely not the friendly little community we once had. The most efficient solution was to shut them all down until the admins could focus on moderating. And then reason number three, there was a small mod scandal. I don't know how much this contributed to the forum's closing, but there was an event that resulted in several members of the mod team being fired. I saw this unfold and wasn't going to make a video solely about it, so right now is as good of a time as any to discuss the events. On December 2nd, Ted shared a statement from the former mod Usagi that outlined what had happened. There was a mod chat and some messages from that mod chat leaked. A leaked exchange was unkind and mocked some of the concepts that the Everskies community values. In Usagi's words, some of these were self-deprecating, but that still doesn't excuse what we said. I had planned a long section where I dive into the specific concepts, but the topic is a complex subject and I don't think the specifics are all that important. The important elements of this story to take away are that Everskies has a user base that values a set of concepts. Moderators said things mocking those concepts. Users were upset when they discovered this mockery and expressed their feelings. The mocking behavior is unacceptable to Everskies and as a result, those moderators were fired. In my opinion, this was handled pretty well. The moderators took responsibility for their actions and were either fired or stepped down. I approve. While we're on the topic, I was petitioned to address a different scandal. This happened before the current era of Everskies with its popularity. It was brought up to me by a couple of different users. I sought Parrot's insight on what had happened as well so I could get different perspectives of the story. So I will be presenting all the different perspectives that have been brought to me. The users who brought this up will remain anonymous, but I'll use passages from the messages they sent me. For this story, you'll need to know Parrot and Tut, already introduced, and Kai, the owner of a game called Virtual Popstar, a competitor to Everskies. In 2020, Parrot discovered a series of vulnerabilities on Virtual Popstar that benefited the exploiter. In exchange for exposing one of the vulnerabilities, Kai, the owner of Virtual Popstar, paid Parrot 100 euros. Parrot later found a different vulnerability where a user could change the URL on a payment confirmation page to receive more on-site currency than they paid for. According to Parrot, I just shared it with some people who used to be in the Eversky staff team, and we joked about it. These people apparently shared the method to their friends. I could have sent it to Kai and gotten 100 euros, which looking back I should have done, but I just decided not as people were telling me he didn't deserve it anyway and that it was an obvious bug. And since some people already tested it out, I didn't want to get anyone in trouble. This bug was apparently shared with Kai some months ago, and a lot of users blamed me for sharing the bug. However, I did not and I never expected people to use it and gain credits valued at thousands of euros. Personally, I wouldn't dare if it was a website where I cared about my stuff in my account. News of this exploit eventually spread and according to one user, It was a huge scandal. Players were put in a sort of debt where they had to pay back every penny or return all the credit or a bunch of stuff would happen. Just a bunch of empty threats from Kai, really. He did, however, threaten a minor, a close friend of mine. She was really scared. One user had to pay 5,000 euros back. The user wanted me to share this story because I think it's important that people know who they're so ruthlessly supporting sometimes. I was one of them. I have no actual problem if people enjoy the site because I understand the appeal, but I believe in transparency. They should know how the creator of the site they love acts, how he doesn't care. He's Kai 2.0. I hope you guys understand why I don't cover every tip that's brought to me as soon as it's brought to me. I have a full-time job and I would need to make this YouTube channel my full-time job if I were to adequately cover every tip brought to me as soon as it's brought to me. That's why I am incorporating this story into this video because it kind of fits. Hope you guys get that. At the end of the day, this doesn't seem to me to be exceptional drama, but I also see this kind of stuff happen all the time where there's like kind of a gray area exploited and then people deal with the fallout and it's hard to handle anything perfectly. In my opinion, the person acting the most inappropriately in this scenario is Kai. He didn't have to extort a minor to get paid back for fictional currency that only really exists to benefit Kai. If there's a person in that scenario who is being unethical, it's Kai. That being said, I'm keeping my eye on the owners of the site to watch how they handle the complex ethical qualms that come with running a website that will mostly survive on user-provided content. 
it's particularly notable that the users that will be providing the content will largely be minors. My major grief with Kai is how poorly the contributors were recognized or compensate on Virtual Popstar. Let's see how Parrot and Tut navigate those exact same challenges. Looking forward, on January 22nd, 2021, Everskies will launch. It's standard that when a game moves from its testing beta to its launch, the entire progress of all the users on the website are wiped. And according to that standard, Everskies is going to wipe wardrobes, currency, shop content, submitted designs, and magazines. Players will also be granted the opportunity to change their username one time. In addition, new achievements will launch and there will be a more masculine starter slash avatar set. If you joined before launch, know that that wipe is inevitable and a necessary component of the launch. This is exciting and it levels the playing field for all the users. I want to know what you're looking forward to the most with Everskies. Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys ever have a tip about stuff that you see going on that's unethical, go ahead and email it to me. My email address is juliebonkllc at gmail.com. Thanks. If you're watching this and thinking to yourself, wow, Julie, that hallway looks a whole lot less yellow than it used to. That's very perceptive of you. I did paint it last week, and that is why it's now a light white instead of a light yellow. And in order to prevent an outlet plate gate 2, I would like to confirm that all of the outlet plates and light switch plates have been cleaned and replaced and are secured. All right, thanks.